Now we haven't created a large design in a little while, so stick with me if you want to see me create a huge arrangement in this gorgeous copper bowl. today's video I haven't done a large design in a, in a little while I've been using some supermarket flowers to show you how you can create a design for home but today I've bought myself a new container now it isn't from a charity shop which is quite unusual for me but I needed some new bases to create some large designs here in work and this is something I would use for a wedding it's a big container and I didn't want to fill it all with floral foam so inside I've used an upside down plastic dish and that will help raise the floral foam and then what I've done is I've used a second container which will sit quite comfortably inside here and that's holding two pieces of floral foam and it's about two thirds per piece so I've taken a third off the block and I've wedged both of those into the container and that will sit really comfortably on the top and the benefits of this is if I'm doing this for a wedding it might be in a church it could be in a reception often I stand them on metal stands it means that the bride and her family can lift out the design and take it home with them and it leaves me with this beautiful decorative bowl now this has come from the range so if you're in the UK it's from a company called the range and you can also get them in silver. So if you wanted to buy one, you can pop out and get one for yourself. I've got an idea in my head of how this design is going to work out, but I don't know what shape I would describe it as. So as it progresses, you can see how well it comes together. I do have quite a lot of foliage for this arrangement and they are flowers that you probably won't be able to get hold of in the supermarket but you could order them from your local florist shop or if you're lucky enough to have a wholesale account then you can go and buy them from your wholesaler. Okay so I haven't introduced myself my name is Sharon welcome to my channel there's lots of interesting tutorials and videos that you can watch and I am using floral foam and I know that you know not everybody wants to use floral foam any longer but I appreciate that there's still a lot of you arranging with the foam and what I'm going to do is once I've made this design photographed it I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to redo it using wire mesh or chicken wire so that you get to see this design created in a more sustainable and more environmentally friendly way so for a minute I'm going to use these fabulous aspidistra leaves and I did say I had quite a few of them and I'm going to rotate them out from the center this is going to help cover my floral foam and it's going to give me some base weight and some structure to the design they have a lovely loose movement to them and today I'm working with a knife so more often than not I work with scissors because that's what most of you are working with at home but as florists we often work with a knife because it speeds up the process it means that we are only working with one tool and we're not putting it down picking it up picking up another tool and so on and so on now this design could be all round but today I'm going to do it front facing so if it was in a church often you don't see the flowers at the back so you don't need to waste your budget on placing flowers at the back of the design so what I'm going to do here is just roll a few of the aspidistra leaves so that I get a shorter piece of foliage to work with. I'm just going to lean over and get these two. It's going to cover my foam fairly quickly without spending a vast amount of money on foliage. And if you can't get hold of the aspidistra that give you that lovely sort of fountain look, then you could use eucalyptus privet you could even use conifer if you're just practicing at home but we want that quite soft almost like um, a volcano erupting from the center of the design and it's going to give me lots of movement and lots of softness now I also have the cordyline leaves and this is going to give me a bit of a red edge initially I'm going to use them on the full stem 
this will help give me some height I'm going to introduce another texture and I know my container is copper and maybe at the moment you're thinking the red and the copper tones don't work together but hopefully when you see my flower choice you'll realize why I've introduced a little bit of this red tone so that's the front I'm just going to turn it around so I can see how it's coming together and if you're aware of sort of flower arranging through the ages and you're aware of the Victorian era then the Aspidistra plant just in the manner that I've arranged it here was a really popular plant in the Victorian era and they would have had it sitting in gorgeous um, ceramic and pottery containers on a tall stand called a jardiniere and the shape of this is definitely so far inspired by the Victorian era but that's probably as far as those two connections go now I'm going to introduce my first flower and this is the, a gorgeous gladioli these ones are from the local supermarket I've got a few that haven't opened yet and then I've got a few of this wonderful cream color with a slight sort of peach center and I, I have used this in a previous video don't know whether it's come or whether it's in the future um, but it has that quite interesting coppery pink center to it what I'm going to do with these is give me some height and I'm probably going about one and a half times the height of my container and I could go larger if I wanted to but I'm a bit restricted with the camera to ensuring that you can clearly see all the flowers going in so and in initially I've just got two there in the center that's going to give me some height we've got the width already created and I have foliage from front to back so we've already got that depth and then with the more open gladioli I'm also going to bring these up towards the center but what I don't want to do is create that very severe triangle shape so I'm not bringing my gladioli out at that side position I'm going to bring them up facing upwards very much like a sort of fountain if you think about a hose pipe and you turn the hose pipe <coughs> excuse me you turn the hose pipe upside down and the water sort of all sprinkles out from the top that's the effect that we're trying to create so almost like an upside down shower head the gladioli are quite heavy so we want to ensure that they're deep into the foam so they don't work themselves loose and if I feel at any stage that there's too much weight towards the front then I'll need to add in some material here at the back so that it's well balanced and it doesn't tip over right now my next flower is this gorgeous arum lily look at the stem on that absolutely fabulous I chose this color and the variety is gone from my head so I'll link it in the description box later but I chose it because it had those copper tones in it and this was the reason that I introduced some of the red tone because if we look at this one the center of the arum lily has a much darker reddish tone to it so I thought those were going to link really well together now I'm going to do the same sort of effect I'm going to bring them out from the center of my foam so we get that explosion effect I'm angling them slightly backwards that will help again with the weight and it'll stop my arrangement from falling over um, I don't want to make it very symmetrical so I need to be careful at the moment that these two don't sort of become very dominant standing out on either side hopefully when I've introduced the other materials they will blend in to the arrangement much better at the moment they're possibly a bit angular there at the back and I've got five of these it doesn't matter if you have less or more just try and evenly spread them out in the arrangement I'm going to bring two either side and then one sort of towards the middle gorgeous um, color beautiful strong stem really really pleased with the color that came in now if you are new here my name is Sharon and I've got a YouTube channel full of videos to help you learn flower arranging I've also got a Facebook group called Sharon's Innovations Group don't look for me personally 
look for Sharon's Innovations Group and you can join and you can share photos and ask questions of any designs that you've created. And I also teach lots of online classes. So if you're interested in participating in a class that's presented on Zoom, then just email me on sharonsour at hotmail.com and I can give you some information. Or you can pop over to the website sharonsour.com, have a look under the online courses section and you can see what's available. Okay, so if we have a look at it from the side again, there's plenty of material coming towards the back to get us that three-dimensional effect. I've got a nice clear outline shape. Everything is almost erupting from the center like a fountain. And I haven't got that very set formal pattern that we often create with a triangle. Now then, I have a gorgeous flower. Everything today is very gorgeous. So this one is Celosia. If you're in a warmer country, then you might be able to grow this in the garden. It doesn't like our damp conditions here in the UK, but it is a lovely one to have in floral design. I've got five. I'm gonna spread these out fairly equally. The foliage never looks too good. It's a always a little bit poor but the flower head itself is a fairly good lasting flower as long as it's not the weather isn't too damp so if you're going to use Celosia here in the UK try and choose it in the summer months where it's quite dry and um, the, the air is warm when it's the, that very wet claggy sort of temperature we have here in the UK the Celosia doesn't do very well at all and you can often get the Celosia in small plants in the supermarket. They won't survive through the winter. I picked them up in garden centers as well. They won't survive our cold winters, but if we had a hot summer like we've had recently, then you will get these to grow in the garden. All right, now this is a particularly large one, almost like a feather, beautiful textural material. And I don't want to bring it right at the front because then I'm going to hide that gerber, that uh, gladioli. So I'm going to slightly offset it. But aren't they wonderful colours? Aren't they working really well together? It's almost like a warm, cosy fire. Fabulous for an autumn design. And it would be great for Halloween if you're celebrating, uh, you know, you're having a party at home and if you want to create a sort of firework inspired or a warm bonfire arrangement, then this would be perfect for that. It's almost like a witch's cauldron and you could spray it black and you could create a really dramatic design for Halloween. Right, now my final piece, I think it's gonna be my final material. We'll see um, if we need anything extra when we get to the end. This is Leucodendron. We've used this a couple of times in different designs. And this is Gold Strike. I'm going to use the scissors to cut this one because it's quite a tough stem. I think I've got five of these as well. I'm gonna spread these around so that we get an even distribution of the color. This is a really long lasting foliage. It's and now I'm really going to ramp up the colours and we're going to put this really pretty flower in. This is called Leonotis and it's quite an unusual flower. It's got almost like an umbrella shape here in different sections. If you've got Flomus growing in your garden then it's quite similar to that flower in its shape. But the Flomus is a yellow colour. And I've got five of these as well. The foliage isn't particularly attractive. So again, I'm just gonna remove the majority of the foliage off the flower and continue with that color and that shape and texture all the way around. Isn't that just gorgeous? And if you don't want to use the Leonotis tall like I'm doing, then you can cut it down in between the large heads and use it in a smaller, shorter arrangement, which is hopefully what I'm going to do in another design. So you get to see this these types of flowers used in different ways. Right, let's keep bringing that colour. My final piece, I, I am, I think, going to add in some extra greenery at the bottom. We've got a few gaps here at the front in between the Aspidistra, and I think I'm going to add in some more of the red. So I'll be right back. So I'm back, and I have some more of the cordyline, and this time I'm going to cut them and use them as individual leaves and we can pop them 
don't want to do sort of one in between each aspidistra because that's going to look quite um, formal and quite set. So I'm randomly going to place them in at the front so that we've got some different shapes and colours alongside one another. Okay, so that's, I think, a much, much better shape there at the front. I, I'm going to cut this one shorter. This is annoying me slightly because it's a little large at the front and it's a bit dominant in that front section. And my final flower, you might be thinking, goosh, she can't get any more flowers in there, but I have an amazing protea. It's a slightly burgundy sort of red colour. It's going to work really well with my foliage and pick up all the reddish tones in the cut flower. And it's a big head. Um, if you're new to flower arranging and you haven't done arranging like this before, then I would possibly suggest you put the bigger flowers in at the beginning. But because I've had plenty of practice, I'm quite confident to put the larger flowers in at the end. But sometimes what can happen is that the thickness of the stem can push other flowers out of the way and create a large hole in the floral foam. Okay, so let's keep working our way through these. It's a really tough stem, so if you don't have a good quality pair of scissors, then try using secateurs because you don't want to cause any damage to your hand. Now the protea for me are quite an exotic flower because they don't obviously grow here in the UK, but you might be in a part of the world again where you have these in your garden and I'm really very jealous of that. I'm going to do the same with this aspidistra. I'm just going to cut the stem shorter so we don't have such a, a visually heavy leaf at the front and I think I'm done. I don't think I'm going to get any more flowers in there. Hopefully you can see the even distribution of those gorgeous protea and even though I've cut them down small what I will do is recreate this in a slightly different version using wire mesh so you get to see two different versions of it. I hope you've enjoyed that one. Big and bold today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you want to be told every time I upload a new tutorial. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.